I'm Ben Cartledge, I'm a lecturer in Classic Classics. I'm Michele Bianconi and I am a researcher in Comparative Philology at Classics and Linguistics. My name's Kiana, I'm a second year classicist at Merton. I suppose the basic thing that philology is, is the study of uh, the languages of the ancient world. It starts off as at Oxford at least the study of Latin and Greek but kind of branches out into the other ancient languages of the Indo-European family. We're interested in what they're like as languages in themselves. You're taking some aspects of like the modern field of linguistics, some aspects of more traditional classics. Philology is uh, in a way a melting pot of so many other disciplines. At Oxford you can decide to do well comparative philology which is looking at at least Greek and Latin, sometimes Sanskrit, Gothic etc etc or um, there are papers in which you focus specifically on Greek through the ages, Latin through the ages, um, and kind of different dialect forms uh, of the two. I have a, a, a soft spot for uh, archaic Greek, so uh, Mycenaean Greek in particular. Uh, it's one of those fields of philology that uh, requires uh, a knowledge of a bit of everything. There's lots of archaeological uh, stuff that you need mm. to know, the material culture as well, looking at the text in the materialis my favourite uh, aspect of the subject is rather the Hellenistic Greek end, so the later history of the language, and that's where a lot of my research is. I kind of had a lot of linguistic exposure in school, did a bit of reading on my own, spent a lot of time on Wiktionary just looking up weird etymologies, and kind of just based on my own background, I speak an Indo-European language at home, Farsi, with my parents, and it was just kind of really fun. In my lessons, I kind of picked up on these similarities. Philology is not confined to Greek and Latin, there's so much more to it. Yeah. The first language I did serious research into as a master student was a language called Oscan, uh, which is again a, a, a rather uh, obscure um, language distantly related to Latin. I have a particular passion for uh, the Anatolian languages. Hittite uh, is, is one of the most uh, archaic Indo-European languages and people who did not have books at the time, they would keep their record on clay tablets. Among the many things that these texts revealed are very interesting similarities with archaic Greek literature. So that opened a, a whole new field of inquiry. It's that and vision also, of a kind of global ancient world that's, that's bound right, together yeah. through languages. So, you know, what we're tracking in a way is um, the movement of language through space and time. And that, of course, is part of the movement of people through space and time. I mean, the teaching, I think, I particularly like about philology is how inclusive that can be. Because what we teach here is, is a way of looking at languages. Mm -hmm. It's a method. Mm -hmm. And that can be applied to any language. A lot of the teaching actually happens uh, in large lectures. Which is a really nice kind of breather from the sit in your room alone, read about the Aeneid for about five days and then write an essay. It just makes for kind of a more dynamic learning experience in my opinion. If you already have languages, great, you know, but if you're coming to Oxford and starting Latin or Greek, that's fine. You can still um, do what we call the modest philology option. You don't need to know the languages already. What you need to have is the will to learn them. If you're passionate about deciphering uh, a language, deciphering a writing system, well, that's what, definitely yes. what you want to do. Yes. This book, How Dead Languages Work, is a very useful guide to some of the languages that um, you'll be uh, looking at in uh, the philology course. I think the best way to prepare oneself, regardless of your starting point, regardless of how much you've been exposed to languages, is asking yourself questions about the language. Don't take anything for granted. We use language every day, but it's not the case necessarily that we stop to think about it. And I think philology is one of those subjects where like, the methodological study of language makes you think about language use in the wider world, makes you think about modern languages. You will never be bored with what you study if you want to do the ultimate humanities degree, I think classics is it.